This is the second part of this tutorial and we're going to investigate the Linux image. Okay, so over here we have our host and over here we have our Linux image. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to determine the IP address of our server of our VM image and we can find that our IP address is here and I th think it's on the 75 subnet so on the host it's 192.168.75.1 but we'll just check and what we'll do is we'll bring up the a terminal with inside Linux just takes a little minute to start up so we use ifconfig to find out the address of our interface and we can see it's 192.168.75.35 Okay, so we can fill this in here. 75.135 and the host address is 192.168.75.1. So what we'll do now is we'll just ping from our host into our VM image. Dot one three five. And we can see that works fine and we'll do the same again over here 192.168.75.1 and that is successful we've got to stop the Linux image with uh, control C ok so the next part of this is we're going to have a look at the the web service so if we go into the bar folder and then we're going to www so in here we have one file index.html this just happens to be the default file for web access ok so we'll run netstat we can run netstat minus a but we might get quite a few connections so we'll just have a look at the listening ports with minus l so we can see here that we have an FTP service telnet web put PC and MDNS So the first thing we'll do is from our host we'll contact our VM image just to see if we can contact the web service. It takes a little minute to start up should get our web browser to run this takes a little minute and what we should see is the default web file oops I'll just try again just to see if we've got the right address it's actually one, two, three, five. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we've contacted the web server from our host into the VM image. Now what we'll do is we'll do the same again, but this time we'll use Telnet. 
Telnet 192.168.75.135 and I'm going to do it on port 80 and then we can see get slash index.html and we can see here this is the file that, that we get back Okay, so what we'll do now is we'll actually create a file over here. Okay, so the first thing we've got to do is we've got to check the attributes on the, the web folder. Okay, so we can see here that we have read write for all users. Uh, change mod 666 index.html will change it as we want. If we need to go into the super user, we can just type in su. And we can do the change mod from here if required. So what we'll do is that we'll bring up the XML editor. And then we'll open up our index.html. So we'll just modify this one here, sample page. Here and we'll save that. Let's check that it's been saved. Okay, so it's now called sample page. That's so what we'll do is over here. We'll just check that that page has been saved. 192.168.75. We'll just check our IP address again. 75.135. And what we should see is the new page in our web browser when the web browser appears. Okay, so we can see it's now changed to sample page. This is a sample page. So the next thing we do is we go into the, the log folder. We just check here. Into log. And with inside log we have many of our logs. So we have an Apache, Apache, Apache log. And you can see these have been updated fairly recently. So we can have a look to see what accesses we've had. So you can see here this was a recent access from Firefox and it uh, just been updated and then we can look at uh, previous accesses from here. So you can see there that the the get command is actually shown. So from this we can actually check what files have been accessed. So now what we'll do is we'll, we'll run the telnet service. We'll run the telnet client to connect into the VM server 175.153 check again 
entry 5. Okay. So we just log in again. And we can see the home folder is home Napier. So we can uh, create a file save. Okay, so we can see here we have a, a list file, and if we go back to our folder here, we can see there, there's the file that we've actually created, the file called list. So our terminate access works. So we'll just exit from there. Now what we'll do is we'll check the FTP access. So we can check it from a web browser first, if we want, just to see if it's working. So now we change that to FTP protocol. And we should get a service, so there you go. So that's the FTP access working. So we'll try again and this time we'll do it from Telnet. So we can say user APR password APR 123 and and so on, just as we've done with the Windows tutorial. Okay, so the next thing we do is the remote desktop. So we have the remote desktop service running with inside the VM image. So we just need to start up our VNC client. It should be around here somewhere. is we'll remotely access it so it's 135 using our VNC viewer and we need to make sure that it's been enabled okay so we allow here and here And now our service should be running. To, to connect in. So we should find that the our Linux image actually shows a message. In this case we'll allow the desktop to be viewed 
and this shows that we can now do the same on here and we can actually even control the desktop remotely.